Right. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for attending this uh this morning lecture series. Right. So as you guys know that we're going to have a special uh design uh, sharing with Bernice Lim. Okay. So Bernice Lim is uh let me do some introductions. Uh, who is actually Bernice Lim? Uh, Lim is actually uh my ex students before. Again, okay, now uh currently she's um. Uh, in her final um, final degree, final semester in degree, okay, so <clears throat> I was interested in her project. Uh, definitely. Uh, so today, uh, she will be sharing with us like uh the process how uh she actually come out with the uh design and the journey of the design and things like that. So perhaps um <clears throat> the students can get some ideas on to uh you know like uh come up with a good process uh when it comes to the design because we've been talking about uh narrative uh how you can come up with narrative since um last semester since you guys are doing a, uh histories uh subject with me uh so we have come up with some ideas like whatever that you guys doing uh last semester and it's kind of, it's, it's sort of like a very um uh, you know, like a, a touch of it. So there is a lot more, uh, you know, um, we, how we can come up with a good narrative. Okay. Um, well, there is a lot of way how you come up with the design. Okay. You have a few ways um, from a previous semester, from a, uh, you know, like from your uh, previous studio. So today, perhaps we can look at something that uh, slightly different from what you guys do. Okay, to get some inspirations and idea how uh, other people are actually doing a design, right? So without further ado, because uh, Bernice was having a class after this at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, uh, I think I just pass the floor to you, Bernice. Right. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Hafiz for providing me this unique opportunity to share my works to everyone of you in this uh, series session. So now let's get started. Um, hold on now. Okay. So good morning everyone. My name is Bernice. Nice to meet you guys. So the topic of my presentation today is about Kikai Shen Roboto, which is my uh, final semester uh, final year semester one project that I did for my design studio work. So this Kikashen Roboto is actually an ecological and energy renewable theme park that helps the poverty to live a better life in economic aspects in the future. So there are different types of economic aspects, but what my space is going to focus is to provide uh, clean water uh, and also to supply a solar power solar and power electricity which is very useful to the body okay so in the beginning of this uh, of the semester before i started to have that project topic the assignment brief that i i gave i i received from the lecturer is about allegorical gamification so what is allegorical gamification allegorical means something that has a story within a story which means um it has a it has a surface story but underneath is it has a deeper meaning inside and gamification means activity engaged in for diversion and also amusement let me give you some example on like what is allegorical okay as you can see from these images okay it actually is an fantasy shop that sells cute dolls. But the purpose is to attract the kids below Trafasol. And the intention behind that kids do not know is they want to attract the, the kids to go into the space. Therefore, this, this uh, fantasy shop, even though it looks like a very fantasy, very attractive, but it actually is a devil place that used to attract the kids to go in there by turning them into a real door and in the end to sell them out. So this is the allegory of this diagram. So which means on the surface you see is something like uh, A, but there's a deep, deeper meaning behind, which is something like B. Yeah. 
So allegory can be very subtle, while other like just like this fantasy cute doll shop can be more obvious. So this is what allegory means. So how do I begin a topic for my project? Before that, let me tell you the story about the site. So Kikashi Roboto is actually located at Rex KL. I believe that some of you guys have been to Rex KL before, right? So Rex KL is located at Jalan Sultan, Petalin Street. So in many years ago, it doesn't call at Rex it doesn't call as Rex KL. It calls called as Rex Theater, which is the most iconic and largest theater in the Malaysia. But after that few years later, they tend to have a fire book down and also phenomenal scenario happen, which end up uh, they like have a lot of issue. So in the end, uh, in year 2018, um, this place has transformed into a recreational place for local entrepreneurs and also um, artisans for them to gather and also to launch exhibition event. So right now, this first KL is considered as a, a exhibition event space. Yeah. So when I went to this site, the first interpretation that I found was the environment is very quite uh, polluted and also there's a lot of traffic and a lot of like uh, dusty and there's a lot of uh, heavy like heavy market smell yeah in terms of that the color scheme like visually i noticed is more to brownish and yellowish and the people around there i realized is they tend to have more tan skin and they the locals around there they tend to have like a uh, more simple lifestyle and they live uh, very happy so I did and I did some analysis after I went for site observation. So what I found out is um what I found out is most of the percent uh, the highest percentage of the population who located at the Rex KL are mainly uh poverty. So I did some research about like uh so here is my site analysis on what I um observed from the rest KL. So they are like, I include like human behavior inside, like their human behavior is like very chill, very calm, and they're very happy. And they're having some like life obstacle issue, which is they're lacking for uh, access, better access to education, uh, access to the clean water, and also like finance, conflict, inequality, and, and so on. So the first, uh, the first part, which is what I observed from the site. So because my project is about uh, poverty, um, so I did more research about what caused poverty happen in this community. So let's look at the middle, this vertical panel. So there are a lot, uh, there are different types of poverty, uh, such as like homeless people, jobless people, illegal immigrants, refugees, and privileged. They are all poverty. And what caused them to face this issue is such as um, lacking access to clean food, lacking access to a better education, um, lacking access to have a better job scope, and then there are conflict happening in the community, inequality between gender, and climate change. This research is not just only based on, uh, not just focused on Malaysia, but also focused the overall global issue, like such as what happened in the Africa. Yeah. So because there are five main factors uh, about what causes poverty. So my, my project, which is Kikai Shen Roboto, will be only focused on one economic issue, which is lacking access of water. So because lacking access of clean water are the main, uh, main issue that cause a lot of problems, such as if you have lack as you if you access if you have a poor access to a clean water, you have a poor you will have a health problem. So if you have a health problem, then you need to like pay some some uh, expenses on the medical medical 
uh, fees. So like for people who live in like Africa, um, when they want to go to clinic or hospital, like for some of the area, they don't have a better infrastructure. So what they do is if their, their home, their village is about 25 kilometers away from the, from the uh, clinic or hospital, they need to travel the distance by walking. So it's like if you lack access of water, you won't have a better health. If you won't have a better health, you won't, you won't like you will spend a lot of money on the, on the uh, like uh, medical, yeah, medical thing, yeah. So for my solution, okay, let's look at the last vertical panel. So for my solution, what I'm going to propose that is go that can help the poverty is to, um design a space that besides the theme park there's a machinery inside the space which is the main iconic structure so this space has a four level height so on the highest floor the function itself is to uh, collect the dirty water from the air and throughout human exercising and contribution in the space which is the exercise in motion to generate um, renewable energy to the spaces. And in the end, it will produce a pure and clean water to the community. So my spaces in conclusion is it not just only act as a team park. So besides team park, um, it will use public's uh, contribution to contribute the um, to interact with the machinery, to, um, to purify the dirty water, and in the end to um, filter and make into a clean water. So in the end, what the community can get from my spaces is, um, no matter they are no matter who they are, like uh, public or outsiders or poverty, they can come into this space and get the free water by themselves. So it's free for the community and it's user friendly to the community. So when look at the programming, so for my programming, uh, for my spaces, uh, the target user is focused on the public, which is above 12 years old to 50 years old, around that range. So for what will happen in my spaces is when you walk in okay so here is the entrance so when you walk in walk from the entrance what you can see from the facade is uh, there's a structure for people to collect clean water and also refill water so it's like it's free it, it doesn't charge anything and also will charge they will charge their solar power bank so once they enter after the entrance they will come into the self-registration area which is they register by themselves and after that after they register they can get the ticket so the ticket in this area is not a normal ticket that we we get like from a cinema which is like a piece of paper so what they can get from this area which is uh the me band but this me band is rental so which is um doing this activity the me band can be with you, but after the activity, the programming, when you want to exit, you need to return the me band to the staff. So what this me band purpose, uh, what is the purpose of this me band is to act as a token. So when you want to enter into space A, you need to scan and go. So if you want to enter to space B, you also need to scan and go. So it, the first is to act as a token. The second is to test like your heartbeat, like instead, like if you um, contribute to, if like if you having like health problem suddenly in the theme park, then the me band will detect like you having like emergency issue, and then it will contact to the staff to as to um, to find you. Uh. Mm. The third, the third thing, uh, which is it will provide a map um, so that like you when you feel lost in the space, you can use MeBank as part of your map like to search like how to access to this area 
or access to another area so you won't get lost in the interior space. So after you um, get the tickets, you will come to the storage area, the locker area, which is you put all those like important stuff at the locker. Then after that, it is where the games begin. So as you can notice, there are different level uh, indicate beside each structure. So different level represent different uh, difficulties. Yeah. So in this structure, so the, for the okay, for the first space that what people going to uh, experience, like the public, like what they going to experience in the theme park is. Um, they need to carry because it's gamification, right? So, what the rules about this area is to carry a ten liter of water, and then uh, carry uh, walk from the starting point to the to the end point, and this requires a good work of six person to cooperate together to finish this activity. So, at the end of the station, once you collect the water, it will. If you will need to drop off the water, uh, drop off the fresh water, and the fresh water will be transported to another structure, which is I will explain later on. After this space, you will come to a ne next area, which is a tunnel. So this area, what the public will um, do is they need to sit on this structure, sit on this infrastructure, and use this infrastructure to. Um, grab the seaweed water bubble. So what is seaweed water bubble is actually um, uh, a water that wrapped with seaweed. So when you put the bubble inside your mouth, um, it will burst. So it's like um, another new kind, new way of drinking of water. So it call it as seaweed water bubble. So the surface is wrapped with seaweed, but inside is actually water. So what they need to do in this space is they use the infrastructure to grab the water bubble without bursting it. So the more the water bubble they collect, the more points they earn. So in the end of this station, once they collect the water bubble, the CV water bubble, the water bubble will be transported to this area as well. Okay. So when to the next area, um, which is when if you want to access to the upper floor or you want to access to a lower floor, um, there are pneumatic leaves inside these spaces and there are around three, three pneumatic leaves in these spaces. So what this leaf act is, the more the public access and use this leaf, the more energy is being um, generated into the space. Because my space is about renewable energy, right? So it requires human contribution inside. Yeah, the more merrier of the activity, the more electricity will generate into the space. So when go to the next area, which is the area for um, mind mathematics, mind calculation. So what they what the public will do in this space is they will be given question. So either you answer like A or B. So if your answer is A, you need to pull the string on your left. If your answer is B, then you pull the string on the right. So no matter what their answer is, like the more, the frequent times they pull the string, it will generate the, like it will operate the mechanism on top of the structure, which is the collect the rainwater, that one. So it will, once the string is being pulled, it will generate mechanism to let the dirty water flow into the next system, which is the purification. And then flow, once the clean water is produced, it will flow down to the ground floor, which is um, what that the public and also the the poverty they can collect for free. Yeah, so when looking at the next area, which is open space, so this is where the observation deck and also the cycling cable car located. So this observation deck, when you stand it at this angle, you can see like what's happening around these spaces. And also for this cycling, um, cycling cable car, is if you cycling frequently, it will also like 
process the energy renewable to the space as well. And next is talking about this space, which is the place that I mentioned before, um, which is the structure that located at the center of the theme park and is the iconic structure as well. So the function is to collect clean water, uh, collect the dirty water from the air and produce into clean water through um, human exercising in motion. So after talking about the theme park, uh, the theme park and stuff, here comes to the most interesting part, which is I explained before, which is the place that collect the clean water that people um, process in this space and also see water bubble. So here is where the station uh, that collect. So this area is actually the secret tunnel. I call it a secret tunnel, which is where the public who play in the theme park and also the outsiders who come into this space, they can get the free water and also uh, charge a solar power bank. So both of the target users, they can meet together in this area. Yeah. Yeah. So for after this secret tunnel, which is the meeting point, um, it is the merchandise shop, which is, remember the Mi Band, it will record your, your, the, the points you collect. So this station will, in this station, you will be able to exchange the point you earn into the merchandise that you want to get, such as life straw um, and also life saving bottle. Yeah, which is a bottle that can filter the water by itself without any any uh, electrical water filtration system. Yeah, and in the end of this programming, which is the exit part, so this is where the allegory comes in, which is if I am the public who play in the theme park, what I know doing the programming is I just play for fun. But in the end of this, uh, when doing the exit time, only I realized that what I do in this space is I contribute something to help the community, which is to help the poverty to have a better access to the clean water. Yeah. So this is the allegory of my programming. So when getting into the concept development, so how I start with my concept development is instead of having sketches like what I did in previous semester and previous semester, but this semester I work in a different way, which is um, starting with a voxel experimental model. So it is part of the requirement under the assignment brief, which is each of the student need to create some experimental model. So how we do is actually we find some like recycled materials or any toys that that don't want already. Then we keep brushing together like pieces pieces to become a one structure. So that structure can become as part of the inspiration to the final design stage later on. Yeah, so this picture actually shows the ex the boxer experimental model that done by my classmate and myself. And here are the short video. Um, please enjoy. Yeah, yeah, that's the video of the stop motion, like how my classmate and I like do the boxer model. 
So for each student, um, like because in order to represent our project identity, so each student will have different color coding. So for mine is yellow color, and my friend, uh, they are like pink color, blue color. So when all those model like put together, it looks like a gaming, gaming voxel city. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the model I made and I took some inspiration from few elements to make my final design machinery. Yeah. So when get into the design uh, stage, um, here is the floor plan. So for this Rex KL, there are four floors. So each floor, um, uh, each floor looks like that. So there are two color coding as you notice. The red color represents the public access, the people who play in the theme park. The green color means the outsiders and also any like poverty or public which is not involved in the theme park. They can still come into this space to get the clean water and also charge the solar power bank. So in order to have a clear explanation like how my space is going to look alike, let's look into the section part, which is it's something like that. So, so when the entrance, right, okay, standing at here, here is the entrance. So here is where the people can um, collect, uh, they can charge the solar power bank. So once they go in, it's actually the reception area, which is, um, they can self-register themselves into the team park and then can get the ticket, which is the me band. So after that, they will go up, which is um, uh, the access, which is the scan and go, that one. So once they go in, they will have locker, everything. And after that, they can just go play their whatever activities by themselves. So what happened in this area is there's no sequence that like you have to go to this area first, then go into that area, then another area. So it's like, just imagine it's like a Sunway Lagoon, Sunway Lagoon theme park. So it's like, if you want to go this area, you just go to this area first. If you want to go that area later, you go that area first. So there's no like specific sequence. Yeah. So for the, it, for the theme park, it consists around like 90% of the building inside. So it's located around this area and also this area. Yeah, as you can notice, this structure is the main structure I, I explained before, which is a structure that collects um, dirty water from the roof. Then through human exercise in motion, it will generate some electricity to purify the water and also supply the clean water to the ground floor. So where is the secret tunnel that the outsiders and the other public can access in this area, which is, it is located around this side, the lower part and also the upper part. So the lower part, which is the area that people can get the clean water and also the upper part, which is people can charge their solar power bank. Okay, here is another section. And here is the perspective view of uh, Ikikai Shen Roboto Ecological Theme Park. So this is the reception area, which is when you first come in, you can see um, the map signage located here. And there's a seating area and also the machine, the self-register machine. So you can register by yourself without any uh, uh, service provided by themselves. If you need any service, uh, there are always staff there to prepare and to get ready for you. And this area is the area where um, after you register, you get the ticket, you go to this area and then you will access the team park. And one of the interesting thing that happened in this perspective is you notice this structure, right? This is actually feature structure, like a vertical plantation. Yeah, so this structure, you notice that, okay, below is the water supply. 
So this area is the is the speaker. So um this plant, the feature plant, is going to supply when the water is uh, supplied to them. But when the water is not enough, the plant will cry. Because my, my space is about excessive robotic, which is involved with nature, animal, and also uh, technology inside it. So without the, if the plant has like, less water, not enough water, then the it will generate some uh, sensors inside to produce like crying sound. So it's like woo woo, don't have enough water. Yeah. So when look at the next perspective, which is the area from like after after you go up, after you go up here, you will come to this area, which is the place that get yourself ready. To enter into the theme park, yeah. So there are a lot of like nature element inside. So same as um as the previous one, if there's no water enough supply to the plant, the plant will cry. Yeah. So here is the built-in system to generate the speaker. Yeah. When look at uh, the next perspective, which is um, the lower ground floor, which is where the production, the production of the clean water is, is assist, which is, remember, on top is the dirty water. And the floor down, below the most lowest ground is the clean water where it, it access. So here is where the public can access to this area. And also when you look at the right hand side, which is this perspective. So this perspective is a secret tunnel I mentioned before, which is the meeting point that gathers the poverty and also the community, which is the outsiders and also the people who pay into the space. So what they do here is they actually can collect fresh water from this area. As you can see, there are um, nature plants integrate with the machinery. So how the water is being um, flowed down to this area is there is a hidden pipe like on top. So once the dirty water is uh, um, like after purify the clean water, it will process down to the machine. The piping and also it will come to this area to for people to collect the clean water yeah and beside here is the speaker which is once like the water is not enough or the clean water is like less, less access this area will like have like, like crying sound to have a signal that the water is not enough already it's time to uh, like reinstall new water, yeah. So this view shows the first floor, which is um like a act as a void. So in this area, you can see what's happening at the upper floor and what's happening at the lower floor. And as you can see, this yellow structure, right, is the pneumatic pneumatic leaf, yeah the one that I explained. So the more frequency that people use this leaf to access upper floor to lower floor, the more energy and electricity to, will generate to the space. And what you notice is like above this uh, bottle bottle thing, it actually inside the sub substance is mixed with water, um, the salt, and also some algae. So when this bottle thing is hang on top, like through the sun, sun rays shining into the space, it will create some shadow effect and amb ambience effect into the space. And also for your information, like salt and algae can help to power light electricity without any uh, electrical stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this perspective is the observation deck, which where you 
when you stand here, you can see like what's happening to the other space. So here is the main structure I mentioned before, and there are activities beside which is uh, involved with uh, cycling. Yeah, cycling, rotate, like exercising in motion. Yeah. The main inspiration I find I found for create when creating a um a machinery is I get inspiration from the Maya pedal technology. So Maya pedal technology is actually um a mechanism that you produce something through cycling, which is example if you cycle on the bike, if you produce the if you pump the water or if you crack the nut, yeah. So this is the Maya pedal, Maya pedal, which is I mainly get inspiration from, and yeah. And above is the um cycle cycling cable car, yeah. So when it comes to the next perspective, which is another space for the outsiders and also like anyone uh, poverty, they can also access, which is it is a open space for outsiders. So this space is actually a space that you can charge your solar power bank. So what if like today you don't have solar power bank, but you want to charge, um, charge the solar electricity in Kikashen Roboto. So my space will provide uh because uh there's a merchandise shop in my space. So it will sell the solar power bank. So you can buy the solar power bank from that. Like if for poverty, right? It will give it will give them for free. Yeah. And here is the external Woo. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Here is the external view of my interior. So the first thing you will assess is the red is the reception area. Then you will go to the uh, scan and go that that area, which is you scan with your Mi Band, then you assess into the theme park. And here is the secret tunnel. Here is the where the lower ground floor production area, which mainly have the clean water and above this structure is the where the theme park located and also the space to purify the dirty water into clean water and also this area which is the area i mentioned before which is this one so it's a space to help to charge the solar power bank yeah and then here is the final presentation board for my project and yeah and here is my mod the model that i made yeah that's all for my presentation thank you guys all right thank you bernice for the sharing i think it's it's, it's very helpful for the students i hope that the students can get uh, uh the point here um Okay, uh, I think uh, there is one question uh, asked from Brian uh, for, for Bernice. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you create all these complicated machinery 3D models? <clears throat> okay, a, a very good question. So how I do like, okay, um, let me go to the... Um, hmm, okay, for example, let me see. Okay, for example, this, this perspective. So it involves a lot of like machinery stuff, right? So for this like these kisses kisses, I actually find the model from the SketchUp warehouse. So like um you can search like at the SketchUp warehouse website, um uh, inside the search button you can like type machinery or factory, like this keyword. So they have a lot of like uh model for you so what i did is i take the model that i want and i realized the mechanism interesting mechanism so i put the interesting machinery like mechanism into my space so like for detail detail like machinery this thing is the model is found from the sketchup 
and like for the structure beside like overall structure is I built from the 3D Max. Yeah, and then rendering is done by 3D Max and then in the end uh I use Photoshop to do like touch up and add like uh like ambience. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like yeah, the mixture. So what I use is I got use SketchUp, I got use uh, 3D Max up main, mainly for modeling. Yeah. Like for those detail detail thing is from SketchUp model. Yeah. How about how about your like for instance like your drawing in the uh like uh, like programming drawings, like how did you actually compose it? Like there's a huge chunk of drawing that you put it all together. You mean this one? Yes. Yeah, um okay, so Okay, as you can see, this little pieces is the uh, SketchUp model. So I, um, once I download that model, I modify it. So to become my own structure, like it can be combine the pieces to become a one whole thing, and then it will form a huge structure. So after I did like spaces by spaces, like. Uh, like for each area, I put into Photoshop and like arrange like the composition of the the this uh, machinery stuff and add the text in Photoshop. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And then we have another question from Miss May. Uh, she uh. was thinking about how long was this project uh have been conducted or so the durations of it. Um. For okay, for the semester for to finish up this this project is um around four months. Yeah, total is four months, like from the start to the end. Like if talking about this programming board, the time given is about two weeks. Yeah, if talking about this this narrative board, the time given is about three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bernice, like, uh, okay, um, perhaps you, you can share with us, like, how you come up with this kind of, like, a, a narrative uh, drawing, like, how, how the ideas was actually, uh, uh, you know, like, pop up when, when you start to do your uh, drawings for this narrative bot. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, I give you two examples, uh, two, two scenarios. The first scenario you can see like on the left is I did a uh, hand-drawn, like 100% fully hand-drawn, um, not included the text yet. And then the right one is the 3D modeling. So for this one, how I do is I sketch um, the, I did the sketches on a piece of tracing paper. And like one of this area is about A2 size. So it's like 3 A2. So it's like I have three A2 of drawings together. So I after that I scan, then I put into Photoshop and compose. But for this area, but for this board, right, I did not go into the sketching process, which is I straight away start with the 3D modeling, which is I keep bashing the element together to form a structure. But at the same time, the structure is related to how I want to uh, implement the content inside. Mm. Yeah. So the difference is the left one is I start with the sketches first, which is I draw everything out. But for this one is I work in a more flexible way, which is I do 3D modeling because if anything, I can just like uh, delete a man. But this one is have to work carefully because once you maybe do anything wrong, need to like restart again or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, I, did I answer your question, sir? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, no, uh, I think it is more like uh, the process, how you come up with the narrative because you know that most of the students actually struggling about come up with the narrative, like what sort of like narrative that oh, you okay. know, like, um, uh, should uh, come up with like for instance like you have done a good research in the first spot which is like you study about the uh, site you know like you were talking about like the, the social uh, issues and then like the mm -hmm. water and such 
So when you come up with the second board, which is like more like uh, looking at what are the intentions or what are the, you know, like a, a, a sort of like a solutions that you wanted to uh, uh, solve the first board, that's, that's, that's okay. what happened to And then okay. like, how come, uh, you know, like how you transform it into like the, uh, the third one where you're already like identifying sort of like the, the narrative and then uh, the, 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 the programmings that you wanted to have in your in your design right mm -hmm. so that's that's i think that's that's what the the, the student is actually okay like. i i get what you mean i get what you mean already yeah yeah uh, yeah 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 so um what i start how i start the narrative is i go to the site first and then through the observation and analysis i find the issue from there so this issue is um the starting point that my topic began, which is what I found, like for example, the main issue I find is the poverty. So this becomes the main topic issue that I want that I want my project to solve. Yes. Yeah. So after that, um, once I have the issue, like uh once I have the issue ready, which is my target user is the to help the poverty to live a better life. So then only I start with the research, which is poverty. Okay, for example, if today, another example, okay, let's not talk to, talk about this project. Okay, mm -hmm. I give you another example. Um, today you went, you go to a site, which is Kong si KL example. So this Kong si KL is located at the ocean. So what you notice at this uh, Kong si KL, the site is there's a lot of, uh, um fish die or a lot of air water pollution so this become the issue of your topic which helps you to develop into the second stage which is like your point okay your point you focus on the um water pollution and also um the struggle life of the ocean species okay this is your point your issue so then you move to the second stage, which is the research part. You research like what uh, about like water pollution, like what caused water pollution, the negative impact, um, and also like ocean, ocean species, like you know, why it causes negative impact, etc. So the second board is the research about your issue. Mm -hmm. So the third board is about your solution, which is because your space is about, okay, um, water pollution, right? So how you come up a solution that solve the water pollution issue? It can be, it can be you create a product, or you can create a machinery, or what? Yeah. So the third part is the solution, and it also in third. Your thesis says that the third part will be like a bit of the imaginary, like what are the future could offer, uh, uh, from your your issues that you found out. Right, that's that's what you mean for the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Good. Uh, thank you. And then we have a question. Can you share uh, from Miss Fisher? Can you share with our students how do you find conceptual models are very important to your design development? Like, yeah. Um. Um, can you repeat the question again? Yeah. You were talking about like how does your conceptual models are very important in, in your design development as, as part of the process? Like oh. how yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh like the voxel model I did oh, okay, like the voxel model I did, the important part I find in this process is um, I can get inspiration out of nowhere, like instead of starting from zero. Like I give you an example, if you start with a sketches, is you start from zero, right? Like coming from your mind, then inspiration, then you sketch. But this model making, the different way is the pieces already there. It's just like the way how you compose it, and then it become uh like once you compose it can become the element that inspired me for developing the final design. And the benefit of doing this model making is because um, like when I create one model, 
I can see this view in 360. So I can get my inspiration from the top view, the elevation, the external, yeah, in many views. Yeah, in sketches, um, it is different, uh, it is different, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that maybe, uh, like, if we can put it in words, it seems like we can understand more about the structure because sketches is quite limited for us to, you know, like, look at the design in how and also, like, how the functions of it. So when you convert it into, a, like, a 3D models, like, it, you can understand more about the structure and how it can uh, work very well. Is, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, right? yeah. Yes, right. yes. All right. And then uh, we have Fine Jai Um we're asking about how does all these explorative structures uh, come together? Like, how does all these function structures come together pieces by pieces? Like, how you combine them? Because uh, I think uh, what he's trying to say is that because you have like a, like a you know, like a many uh, a small, small uh, structures that you come up with from the early beginning. Like, you have it from the, uh, the SketchUp uh, store, right? Like from the library. And then how you come out and how you combine them um, uh, to, to come in one piece, like uh, become like one structure. I think that's what he's trying to say here. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for what I did uh, for the structure thing, um, I do it in a random way, which is I start with a random step, which is I simply, simply like, not nice to hear la, the sleepy sleepy word, but it really works. Which is I sleepy sleepy like connect the pieces together without thinking like the design sense, without thinking the beauty of the the art piece, like what is going to happen in the end. So it's like during the process I just like random randomly I feel like okay, I want to add this structure, then I add this structure. It's like I do it in a very very random way without any planning and stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then in the end only I found that hey, this design I think looks quite nice and looks quite well. Yeah, because like when we design right, um sometimes we will plan like okay, we will start from sketches, we we'll organize like our composition style, like we we'll do very, very detailed planning, then only we start the designing, right? So, but actually, there's a different ways of doing it. Like, instead of like, do it in a very, like, systematic way, you can do it in a very random way, which is like, like just like, uh, this, um, I simply like, combine the structure without thinking to create one structure. Then I found that, it hey, this accidentally become a nice structure. Yeah. So, um, how to explain is um, <laughs> I think uh, what you're trying to say that you just let yourself um, explore first yeah yeah, yeah. So, and then um, you know like and then then only you think about like how to make it in, in a design rather than you think about the design first and then only you come yeah. up with the, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, the yeah, model. yeah. That, that's what you're trying to say here right yeah yeah that, yeah that's, that's, that's the important um, point here that uh, Miss Bernice actually uh, highlighted because I think most of the student is actually worried about the outcome of the design like how beautiful the design will be rather than they think about like how can they expand more like explore more about the, uh, the potential of the design at the early stage of the uh, design process I think that's 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 a good uh, point that you have it there. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and then one more, one more uh, suggestion I give is um, don't be afraid to like scared that you create sale design or what. Um, just follow your heart. Um, do if you feel like okay, this looks nice, or you feel like oh, like by adding this or that, like looks pleasing, then just do it. Like, don't scared that. Or it turns out very ugly or what like if you like if you scared like that scared like that then in the end you won't have like, yeah, much more exploration like, right? like you're putting a wall in front of you from you to yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. all yeah. right uh okay uh and then uh some of the students from mariam were asking about what material that you use for your models oh okay okay so for this 
um, okay, I took I took the base first lah. So yeah. for this base, I did by I use the uh modeling cut. Yeah, use a modeling cut, and then on top this structure is uh like. Uh, straws like pieces of the element and then the wire frame and also the uh, these lines and like some of these element can actually find found from the Mr. DIY or two ringgit shop mm. yeah which is um you can get like toys from there yeah it's, yeah. yeah but what I suggest is don't go buy those expensive toys because it's not worth like if you buy like 200 ringgit uh toys just to make this model i don't think it's worth it unless the toy itself the design is a uh, very nice yeah so what i suggest is um because most of my per my model i bought it from the two ringgit shop which is very cheap like one thing cost two ringgit only yeah, so, yeah, in the end, the result works quite well. La. Yeah, I mean, it, it, no matter where you get the, the materials from, it's just like how good you actually um, improvise it and put it in, in, in uh, one uh, outcome, like in one model. That's, that's the most important. Because I think uh, also like uh, the student having a problem like to find the right materials, like they don't know what sort of like materials that they should use. <laughs> so like they just, oh. you know, like, when it comes to model, they just straight away thinking about the model car, you know, like all those like mounting board and things like that. So they don't really, you know, like... Uh, uh, okay, la, I, I tell you like guys, guys, up to you. La. If you want to use what material, just use what material. Like for me, I use, um, uh, mostly I use toy. But for my other classmate, right, he less use toys, but most of his model is done by modeling cut. So I think it's um just depends on like which way you prefer. Like there's no there's no limitation. Just let yourself go explore. It can be it can be a balsa stick, it can be any toys, it can be plastic bag, wire frame, or any like paper, tissue or a pen and stuff like it can be anything because like once you like keep brushing the element together right um in the end uh after you spray paint everything it will look like a piece of beautiful yeah. structure yeah, yeah it yeah, can yeah. be a hair dryer also guys it can <laughs> be anything yeah i so i think just be flexible yeah, yeah by exploring the models stuff to to come up with the ideas like it's, it's it's not like really matters on how your lecturers uh uh will reject or not you know like you can't yeah, yeah. really uh read your lecturer's mind of oh if i do this definitely yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Like, uh believe in yourself like uh you know like you know what you are doing and then definitely your lecture will understood whatever that you have to try to say or try to do right I think that that yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. it. I think there's more uh, question coming, and perhaps we have a very limited time here. <laughs> perhaps oh. I think the students are very interested in your project. Uh, I think I just can wrap up uh, here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, what we can get from this project is that uh, because you cannot compare what Bernice Miss Bernice has done here because uh, she's actually doing it in a degree level. So perhaps for your uh, diploma level and you are still in semester three, I think, uh, uh, semester four at the moment. So uh, there is a lot of journey for you to come up with this kind of project or this kind of outcome of the drawings and, uh, you know, like uh, uh, modeling and whatnot. I think this is where the starting point uh, of the student should explore. The main point is that you should know what are the process of the design. It, it, it shouldn't, you know, like there's something that you can uh, carry forward or you can adapt into your design project uh, in the final project. That's the part. Uh, the way how Miss Bernice is actually interpret the design and how it's actually uh, she been highlighting about the issues and then how she come up with like a you know, like a design ideas and then the narrative, what sort of like narrative. We're talking about narrative so also for two semester already and then, um, you know, like uh, I hope that you guys can get some ideas like how other people do in finding a narrative of the project. Um, I think uh, that's 
that uh, will uh, wrap up the whole things today. Uh, well, definitely thank you, Ber uh, Bernice, for uh, joining us and uh, you know willing to share with us your your uh, brilliant projects and make the students scared <laughs> and looking. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I hope you don't uh, regret of joining us today. Oh, uh, no regret, no worries, no worries. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, in future, you can uh, show us with many, many more interesting projects uh, with my students. Uh, and I wish you uh, good luck for your final uh, semester this semester. And I hope that you score well uh, for your final. Thank all you, right? sir. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, and wish you all the best hmm. in everything, uh, in whatever you're doing right now. Yeah, all the best, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay thank you, sir. Right, thank you, Bernice. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye-bye.